Okay, so I need to tell you what just happened. I sent the beta to 10 people, and within 24 hours, eight of them uninstalled the app. Let me guess. They never got past the login screen? How did you know? Because we lost 347 beta testers the exact same way. And the worst part? The auth worked perfectly. The security was bulletproof from episode two. They just took one look at that login screen and deleted it. So it's not a bug. It's just ugly. It's worse than ugly. It's, I don't trust this app with my credit card, ugly. Basic text fields, default blue button, no styling whatsoever. It's literally just text field, secure field, button, stacked in a V-stack. Like a homework assignment from 2010. That's exactly where we started with Drive. But here's what saved us. The login screen we actually shipped? Gorgeous gradients, custom inputs, smooth animations, loading states. Same authentication code underneath. But one pattern changed everything. What pattern? Please tell me there's a solution that doesn't require hiring a designer. MVVM. Model, view, view model. And once you understand SwiftUI's state system, everything clicks into place. It's honestly like a revelation. Wait, MVVM? Isn't that just another one of those architecture buzzwords that make simple things complicated? That's what I thought too. But no, hear me out. When we first built Drive, we put everything in the view. API calls, business logic, state management, all crammed into loginview.swift. It became 800 lines of unmaintainable mess. 800 lines? For a login screen? Yeah. We had if statements nested six levels deep. We had state variables scattered everywhere. And the worst part? When the UI didn't update, we had no idea why. What do you mean the UI didn't update? I thought Swift UI was reactive. It is reactive, but only if you use it correctly. See, Swift UI watches for changes to specific types of properties. If you just use regular variables, Swift UI doesn't know they changed. Your state updates, but the screen stays frozen. So how do you tell Swift UI, hey, this changed, please update? That's where at published comes in. It's like a magic announcement system. Every time a at published property changes, Swift UI automatically re-renders any views that use it. No manual refresh, no delegates, pure reactivity. Okay, show me. What does this actually look like in code? All right, let's build an auth view model. This is going to hold all the state and business logic for authentication. The view will just render it. Here's the key structure. Wait, before you show me code, why separate it at all? Why not just put the logic in the view? Great question. Three reasons. Testing, reusability, and separation of concerns. If your business logic is in the view, you can't test it without running the entire UI. But if it's in a view model, you can write unit tests that check when user enters invalid email, does SMTP get set correctly? Oh, so the view model is just a regular Swift class you can test independently. Exactly. It's marked with at main actor to ensure UI updates happen on the main thread and it conforms to observable object so Swift UI knows to watch it. Then, all your state properties are marked at published. Okay, so what state do we need for a login screen? Think about what changes. You need the email and password the user types, right? Those are at published strings. You need to know if we're currently loading, that's a at published bool. You need to store any error messages, at published optional string, and you need to know if they're authenticated, another at published bool. Email, password, emitting, ISBN, sanitize. Got it. And these all trigger UI updates automatically? Automatically. So when you set isn't Joomla to true, any button that checks that property instantly shows a loading spinner. When rrdect, the error text appears. It's declarative. 
You describe what the UI should look like for each state, and Swift UI handles the transitions. That actually sounds amazing. Show me the sign in method. Okay, so the sign in method is marked async because it calls our Superbase backend. First, we validate the inputs, check if the email is valid, check if the password is at least six characters. If validation fails, we set SRACT and return early. And that error message immediately appears on screen. Immediately. Because error is at published, the view re-renders the second you set it. Then we set insnow to true, which disables the button and shows a spinner. We call the superbase sign-in method in a do catch block. If it succeeds, we set validated to true. If it fails, we set iEditor. Then we set isnos back to false. So the view just reacts to all these state changes. I don't have to manually update anything. Nothing. That's the beauty of Swift UI. The view is purely declarative. It says, if illustrating is true, show a progress view. If error exists, show error text. If initialized is true, navigate to the main screen. OK. Show me what the view looks like then. This is where it gets fun. First, we create the view model as a at state object. This tells Swift UI, create this once and keep it alive for the lifetime of the view. Then we just bind our UI elements to the view model's properties. Bind? What does that mean? See that dollar sign before auth view model dot email? That's a binding. It's a two-way connection. When the user types in the text field, it updates the view model. When the view model changes, the text field updates. They're synchronized. Oh, so the text field and the view model property are always in sync. Always. And the same goes for the password field. Then our button checks inefficient. If it's true, we show a progress view. If it's false, we show the button text. And the button's action just calls await authViewModel.signIn. That's so much cleaner than I expected. But wait, what about all the styling, the gradients and custom inputs? Ah, that's where reusable components come in. We built a custom text field component that we use everywhere. It takes an icon, a placeholder, a binding to the text, and whether it's a secure field. So you just build it once and reuse it? Exactly. We use this same custom text box in 12 different places across Drive. The login screen, the sign-up screen, the profile editor, the booking form. Build once, use everywhere. That's the component philosophy. Show me what that looks like. The custom text is super simple. It's an H stack with an SF symbol icon on the left, then either a text view or secure field, depending on the is secure parameter. We wrap it all in a nice rounded rectangle with a semi-transparent background and a subtle border. Looks professional with like 20 lines of code. That's it. And it looks good. It looks great. And because it takes a binding, it works seamlessly with our view model. We just pass dollar sign auth view model dot email and boom, it's connected. All right, I'm sold on the architecture, but does it actually work? Like, is it fast? Let me show you, run the app. You'll see the login screen with the gradient background, the drive logo, the custom text fields. Okay, it's running. Wow, this actually looks professional. Right? Now, start typing in the email field. Watch what happens. I'm typing, and every character is showing up instantly. No lag at all. That's the binding in action. Every keystroke updates the view model's email property. Now, click the sign in button without entering a password. Clicking, oh, an error message appeared. Password must be at least six characters. See, instant validation. That happened because the sign-in method checked password.count, found it was zero, and set error. Swift you all saw ESEC changed and rendered the error text. All automatic. That's so smooth. Now let me type a password. Type at least six characters, then click sign in again. OK. Clicking. Oh, the button shows a spinner now. It says loading and there's a progress indicator. That's isn't Jovin true. The button checks that property and renders a progress view instead of the text. 
It also disables the button so you can't double click. And now, the screen transitioned. We're logged in. That's IESO checks that property and navigates to the main screen. Every state change is instant. No lag, no manual refresh. Pure reactive programming. This is honestly incredible. I thought Swift UI was going to be complicated, but this is so logical. State changes, UI updates, that's it. That's the revelation. Once you understand at published, at state object, and bindings, Swift UI becomes incredibly intuitive. You stop thinking, how do I update the UI? And start thinking, what states can my UI be in? So we have beautiful UI, reactive state management, clean architecture. We're basically done, right? Well, not quite. What's wrong? We have a gorgeous login screen. Authentication works perfectly. State management is clean, but there's one problem. What problem? We have no data. Look at the main screen. The car list is completely empty. We need to fetch thousands of cars from our database, and we need to do it fast. How many cars are we talking about? Over 50,000 rows in the Superbase cars table. Different locations, different models, different availability states. BMW 320i, Mercedes C-Class, Audi A4, each with pricing, features, photos. 50,000? How do we even query that much data without crashing the app? That's episode four, the database dilemma. And I have to warn you, we made a mistake that almost took down our entire back end. What kind of mistake? Let's just say we tried to fetch all 50,000 cars at once. No pagination, no filtering, just give me everything. And what happened? The app froze, the API timed out and our Superbase dashboard showed a query that took 47 seconds to execute. 47 seconds. Oh my God. But we fixed it. And in episode four, I'll show you exactly how. Efficient queries, pagination, caching, the works. I need to know how you solved this. This sounds like a disaster. It was a learning experience, and the solution is actually elegant once you understand Superbase's query builder but we'll get there. All right, I'm ready for episode four. Let's tackle this database problem. Let's do it. Episode four, the database dilemma. See you there.